Thank you very much, Vasilis, and thank you very much for your kind invitation to participate in this uh, extremely interesting webinar. Um, as uh, Vasilis has been introducing me, uh, I am Secretary General of the European Network of Cities and Regions for Social Economy. This is a network of local authorities and social economy partnerships working since 1994. In this map, you can see uh, the countries where our network has members. Has members means that has public authorities or social economy organizations, or both of them, uh, working uh, towards uh, the building up of a new idea of Europe based essentially on social economy, but also building up legal frameworks which are suitable for social economy. As you can see, we have also members in Όπως Greece. Βλέπετε, έχουμε μέλη και στην Ελλάδα. I belong to the uh, network. See, I've been belonging to the network for uh, several και είναι μέλη του δικτύου για αρκετά χρόνια. As you can imagine, you and this Όπως φαντάζεστε, σε αυτά τα 27 χρόνια που, που λειτουργεί το δίκτυο Ρέδες, έχουμε δει τη δημιουργία for the social economy be they at local regional level uh, or at the, uh, uh, at the national level uh, we, we, we will have uh, my dear friend Xavier uh, taking the floor uh, later on and we know that the first overall social economy law in Europe was actually in Spain even though we know that presently in the present time Catalonia region is going farther uh, compared with the Spanish framework in order to introduce even more uh, more uh, suitable environment for social economy. But today, if you allow me, I would like to take a fully European perspective, because it is true that nowadays we are, uh, everybody is, is talking and speaking about social economy, ourselves we are um, presently managing a PLP, in the, a peer learning partnership in the framework of the Global Actions for Social Economy from the OECD, working with, the, with Spain, Italy, Korea, United States, Mexico, Canada, and, and Brazil. Uh, but, but I think that as we are in Europe, it is important that we have a flow in order to understand how did we get there. I mean, it has not been easy over the last 27 years to build a, a picture, a framework in which the social economy could sit, uh, uh, let's say, at the same uh, level, at the same table as uh, other kind of, uh, of uh, more conventional, so to say, enterprises. And I would like to show this uh, diagram. Uh, I take as a starting date 1997, even though I should start earlier because I think that the roots of social economy, of a social economy policy in Europe uh, lies in the uh, presidency of the commission from Jacques Delors. But I start from 1997 because you have to keep in mind that before that, before the Luxembourg process started, and I will tell you what, it, what was the Luxembourg process, because I assume that someone of you might not remember it, uh, before that moment, we didn't have any reference whatsoever to social economy in EU documents. And I insist on this point because quite often there is a tendency to say that uh, the Treaty of Rome was already talking about the social economy, but actually this is not completely true. The Treaty of Rome was speaking about social market economy and under social market economy, they did not understand what we now call social economy. They were understanding the welfare system, the creation of the welfare system after the Second World War. Uh, so uh, the first time we hear about social economy in an official document is at the conclusions of the Extraordinary Council on Employment from 1997 under Luxembourg presidencies, presidency of the Union. And it's not by chance that we have this in 1997. We were just, we, we, we had just passed the big crisis, employment crisis of, of the 90s. 
and the social economy appear to be something very useful in order to improve the quality of, of, of uh, and the capacity of the system to generate employment. But social economy was already coupled with local development. Uh, uh, they, uh, in, in the Luxembourg Declaration uh, they, uh, that, that has been created in the Luxembourg process, uh, 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 the pillar number 12 was referring to the potential of social economy and of local level in generating quality employment. Uh, if you allow me to say this, this was an idea of social economy purely functional to solve a problem, to solve what was called already at that time, the failure of the market meaning that social economy intervene when there is a failure. I will come back to this point because I think that something is changing and it's about time uh, that we change. After 1997, you see that the arm of this, of this diagram is decreasing because the interest around social economy went down for, for several years, except coming back in 2001, uh, with the uh, Acting Locally for Employment initiative that was an initiative from the European Commission aimed at identifying which sectors of the economy were still creating jobs in, uh, in that time. And uh, one of the conclusions of this was that the only sector that was generating employment, new employment at the, in the early 2000s was the social economy. But this was not enough to think of a European framework policy and therefore also a European legal framework for the social economy. And so after 2001, with the advent of Commissioner or President Prodi into the European Commission, the attention went definitely down, uh, reaching a really a, a lower uh, level uh, in the second half of, uh, of the 2000, until the crisis of 2008. Crisis 2008 put again a social economy on the, under the spot. Uh, a social economy once again in front of a market failure, social economy attracted again the attention of, uh, of European policy making, which means also far our own national uh, government policy making, because we have to keep in mind that we belong to the same continent and to the same uh, uh, union, which means also that we are uh, uh, following more approximately the same policy uh, development. So in 2009, we have an initiative from the European Parliament, the TOIA report called is the first ever report from the parliament on social economy. And I believe that this report should be really read again after so many years, because it was perspecting all that is happening today in terms of creation of an environment for social economy. Then in 2011, we had the, uh, the uh, action from the European Commission that is very well known, social business initiative that has been the, creating the basis for a European definition of the social economy is not an official definition, but still the definition of included in social business initiative, that is uh, the definition of social enterprises are, as non-profit making enterprises pursuing the general interest and governed according to democratic criteria or participatory criteria, sorry, say it's participatory, not democratic. Um, this, this was fundamental because this allowed also to introduce the social economy into the public procurement directive. And is there, in my opinion, that we really make a change when for the first time in directive 24, 23, 24, and 25 of 2014, we have a first definition of social economy. We have finally an article, is article 77, that refers to social economy. And also in the recitals, we have reference to the social economy, but the economic part of it, social economy enterprises. But this is the first time we have. You see, it's, it took almost 20 years between 1997 and 2014 to have finally into an official uh, uh, a law from the uh, European Commission a reference to 
uh, social economy enterprises. But this means also that uh, something is changing at European level. Today, our national legal framework have a strong basis into a European uh, uh, legally relevant framework. And then after that, 2015, we have the Council Conclusion of Social Economy, first conclusions ever talking only about social economy and about the, uh, the importance of developing social economy. This is a turning point because this is the first time in which the governments of our member states uh, uh, unanimously stated the importance of developing a, a, an adapted framework for the social economy ministry in charge was Nicola Schmidt, who is nowadays commissioner, as you know, for employment uh, and social affairs within the European Commission. And I think that this was a key step. After that, we had uh, uh, the decision from a number of member states. Today is majority of member states, is 21, uh, including Greece, uh, who decided to create a, a monitoring committee to follow up on, on the uh, council conclusions up until the uh, Toledo declaration in 2020, uh, 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 named, by, named after the city of Toledo in Spain, where all these head of governments or ministries uh, from different member states has been tracing the roadmap of what was to happen, what should happen during this decade. And this roadmap talks about uh, uh, the necessity of generating a, uh, a, a, a better environment, a better ecosystem for the social economy. And this happened immediately, almost, with the introduction of social economy into the new industrial strategy from the European Union. As you know, in 2020, the European Union introduces a new industrial strategy and into this made of 14 uh, key ecosystems, and among these key ecosystems, we find proximity and social economy. This is a could be a Copernican revolution, because finally social economy is considered as a, a per se uh, e ecosystem. But still, in this case, also in this case, you see that there is a reference to uh, proximity that is a limit to this ecosystem, in my opinion, not only my opinion, in several people's opinion. But still, it is extremely Mr. important Martinetti, because nowadays up? we, in our member states, we have, Mr. again, could you a, a space a room up? in which we could develop a proper social economy policy. The consequence is immediate. Today, we have the new uh, COSME program that is part, as you know, of the single market action. And in this new COSME program, there is a chapter on social economy. So we have, we are present into European policy. We started where, when we started at, at REV, we were really marginal, we were pioneer, considered also a bit uh, eccentric people. But nowadays, uh, the social economy is there, is into the new industrial strategy. And in 2021, we had one event that already happened and one that is going to happen. First event is the fact that social economy was formally included as an objective of the cohesion policy fund. So the biggest fund from the European Union, the regional development fund and the European social fund. Both funds have social economy enterprises as a target for uh, support. And, and I come to the end of this process, on the 8th of December, we will have the publication of the Social Economy Action Plan from the European Commission. There are a lot of expectations around this Social Economy Action Plan. Maybe too much expectation. We don't know exactly what will be inside. The Commission is very undercover from that point of view. But I don't think, uh, I think that the fact that it exists is more important than what it, it, this will contain. Because even though we might not be happy with the content of the social economy action plan, we still have one. And we have been asking this for 30 years, almost. So uh, we have a new, uh, a new picture uh, uh, in which we could 
introduce our national policies and national regulations of the social economy. So now let's say uh, the ball is in our field. We should just take it and go to the uh, to the goal. Thank you.